Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. Today I want to give you a quick introduction to the grammar of graphics that the ggplot2 package is based upon. And to keep the video short we will just focus on the three basic layers. And we'll see in a moment what they are. Right, so some of you might be intimidated when hearing the word graph, uh, grammar. Um, I don't know, if maybe you were tormented with grammar when learning a foreign language. I think uh, when creating plots from data in R using the ggplot2 package we can really relax and ease up and not worry too much about the grammar. We don't have to go deeply into theory and we'll see that the main ideas are quite simple to capture. And um, So some background. There is a book called The Grammar of Graphics that is not related to R but just um, focuses on the, the basic ideas. Leland Wilkinson published in 1999 I don't think you need to read it to be able to create meaningful and pleasing charts in ggplot2. If you want a shorter introduction, there's a paper by Hadley Wickham called A Layered Grammar of Graphics that you may want to read. Um, it's available for free as a PDF and I'll put a link in the description. But I think you can even create um, appealing plots without reading this paper, just trying out and working with our code. So the main ideas are quite simple. There are two key ideas that I want to introduce here. The first one is that graphics are built from layers of so-called grammatical elements. And the second key idea is that variables are mapped onto aesthetics. And we'll go into more detail um, for both of these ideas and we'll see some coding examples in a minute. So there are seven, seven layers in total, but we will just focus on the basic three layers and they are data, which is quite self-explanatory, I think. Of course, if you want to plot data, you need to specify your data set. Then aesthetics that we can describe as scales that we map data onto. And thirdly, geometries that we can describe as visual elements that display data. A more everyday language term would be plot type, but it's good to um, stay in the ggplot2 and grammar of graphics terminology and call them geometries. Right, so a bit more about the three basic layers before we will finally see some coding examples. So I won't talk much about the data, but a bit more about aesthetics. So the first thing that comes to mind is um, the axis. Of course, I have to specify which variable I want to map to the x-axis and to the y-axis. But there are other aesthetics that we may want to specify. We don't have to. Um, for example, we can think of colors and fills and size and opacity called alpha, which is a very powerful tool, especially when you have a lot of data points to plot. Uh, we can talk of shapes, um, for example, in point charts. And when thinking of lines, we can think of line types and line width, for example. So much for aesthetics and a little bit more about geometries. So plot types, as we could say in everyday language. So examples for geometries include points, lines, bars, histograms, box plots, and so on. And the nice thing in tidyverse packages and also in ggplot2 is that um, all the geometry functions work with a um, common prefix, geom underscore. So if you're not sure which geometries are available, you can just type question mark geom underscore and you'll get a context menu in RStudio that shows you all the geoms that are available. There are well over 40 in ggplot2 and there are extension packages that even um, provide us with more geoms. Right, so it's time to get practical and see some code examples. So showing the code on the left and the resulting plot on the right. Um, here I made it very simple and I just specified the data and we see we get a gray plotting area but no plot yet. So the data alone does not produce a plot. The highlighted line is, is the code for the plot. ggplot and then specifying the data. So we have to add two more layers to get a basic plot. So the second layer that we will add is the aesthetics. So I specified the data set again. I don't have to name that argument, just specifying the diamonds data set. It ships with ggplot2, so you can use it straight away. You don't have to download it from anywhere. And then the aesthetics are specified inside the AES function. And here I map the cut variable from the data set to the x aesthetic or x axis. And you see that the plotting area on the right changes a little bit. We already see the categories for the cut variable. There are five cuts or qualities of diamonds in this data set. 
but we don't see any data yet because we haven't specified the third basic layer, the geometry. So data and aesthetics do not suffice to produce a valid plot. So we'll do that on the next slide. Um, additionally to the data and the aesthetic, I also specify a geometry, in this case geom underscore bar. So the geom bar function automatically calculates summary statistics, in this case counts for the five categories or five qualities of cuts. And we can say that this is more or less the minimum basic syntax that we need to build up a valid plot in ggplot2, specifying the three basic layers with as little code as possible. So now we do have a valid plot and I hope you see that the grammar is not too complicated. It's not much code that we need to write to get this plot. Now, what we haven't thought about is labeling our axes. We do get um, the variable name cut on the x-axis and a description count on the y-axis, but it's always a good idea to carefully think about how to label your axis and why this is the case I will show you by means of a cartoon. Um, if you haven't come across XKCD yet, I can highly recommend this website. It's got a lot of witty and, and very nice um, cartoons. Um, simplified ideas, but with a lot of intelligence and knowledge behind it, so I really enjoy XKCD. This is one of my favorites. Um, she wants to convince him to break up. He thinks they should give it another try. She shows him this chart with a declining relationship, and now he's convinced, but not because of the data, but um, rather because he thinks he deserves better than someone who doesn't label her axis. So that's why we carefully have to think about labeling our axis, and we do that on the next slide. Um, so I just extend my minimal example a little bit to specify axis labels. So the highlighted code, you see it's three lines of code, but it's quite self-explanatory, I think, specifying a title, an x-axis label, a y-axis label, and even a caption that indicates the data source. So doing that, we don't have to ruin a relationship. Right, so much for our minimal example. We're almost done. Before we finish, I just want to um, mention the other four advanced or optional layers that we haven't talked about. So what we did see was the three basic layers that we always need to build up a plot. You saw that the first two layers were not enough to specify a simple plot. So we always need to specify data, aesthetics and geometries, or at least one aesthetic and one geometry. And the four advanced or optional layers are facets. Um, that's a very elegant way of um, describing how to display subgroups in separate plotting areas, and I think this is really one of the strength, um, strengths of ggplot2. It's a very powerful tool to display um, subgroups, so you still get one plot as a result, and you can specify the layout exactly, and you don't have to handle separate plots to arrange subgroups. We can think of statistical transformations if we like to. For example, we can include regression slopes and scatter plots. We can think of coordinate systems. There are a lot of ways to manipulate coordinate systems or adjust them if we need. And then lastly, themes. Um, that would be a, a topic in itself. Uh, if we go back to the previous slide, anyone who knows a little bit about ggplot2 will see that we use the default theme. It's called theme gray with this typical gray background and the white grid lines. So. If you create plots that you want to publish somewhere on a blog or in a report somewhere, it's always a good idea to customize the theme a little bit to show that you're not just using the default. So I'll show that in a later video. Um, if you still think it may be a bit hard to build up plots from scratch writing code, you can check out another video that I made recently where I show a graphical user interface called Esquiz that you can use to build up plots just using your mouse and drag and drop functionality. So I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, so there you can create plots directly using your mouse and you can also obtain the R code that you need um, to reproduce that plot. Right, that was it for today. I hope you liked the video. Um, all the best for your own data visualizations. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. That really helps. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.